a young man was sitting at the airport gate waiting for his flight home when he realized that the flight had been delayed. So he bought a book and a small bag of chocolate chip cookies to enjoy while he waited. And as he sat reading, he noticed an older man sitting next to him reading a book as well. He was about to turn back to his book when he noticed that the older man reached into the bag of cookies that was sitting between their seats and he took a cookie. Shocked, he pointedly took a cookie from the bag and began eating it. The nerve, he thought, he didn't even ask. The older man just looked at him and smiled, took another cookie and began eating it as he continued reading. He said nothing, but inside he could feel himself starting to get angry. For each cookie he took, the older man took one too. And this continued until there was only one cookie left. And he sat there fuming, debating whether or not to say anything, when the older man did the unthinkable. He picked up the last cookie, split it in half, and handed him a piece. Well, that's it! He was so infuriated by the older man's lack of consideration that he packed up his things and moved. His flight was called soon after, so he gladly boarded and began settling in for the flight. And as he opened his bag to take out his book, he felt his heart sink. There at the bottom of his bag was his bag of cookies. You see, things are not always as they seem. Each and every person in this world has a story, one much deeper than a surface glance reveals. And similarly, every object and occurrence in the physical world is laced with layers of depth and meaning. We have to choose to peer beyond the surface in order to discover these layers. In Parsha's told us, Rivka Imenu gives birth to Yaakov and Esav. Her pregnancy is extremely difficult, with the two fetuses struggling violently within her. Rashi cites the famous Midrash which describes the battle that transpired between Yaakov and Esav while in the womb. Whenever Rivka passed the place of Torah study, Yaakov was drawn towards it. And whenever she passed the house of idol worship, Esav was drawn towards it. Yaakov desired the spiritual in Olam Haba, the world to come, while Esav desired the physical in Olam Hazed, the physical world. And this was the cosmic battle that took place within Rivka's womb. But the problem with this battle is pretty obvious, because if Yaakov wanted the spiritual and Esav wanted the physical, then where's the point of contention? It's not a battle. I mean, they can simply each take what they want without any need for argument or disagreement. There's nothing to fight over. I mean, for example, if there are two cups of ice cream, chocolate and vanilla, and one sibling wants chocolate while the other craves vanilla, then there's no argument. They're actually in agreement. Each can simply take what they want. So an argument would only arise if there was one cup of ice cream and they both wanted it. So what was the fight between Yaakov and Esav really about? So in order to understand this, in order to understand the deeper depth of this battle, we have to understand the concept of Iker, which means primary, and Tuffel, which means secondary. Iker is the inner essence, the main entity. And Tuffel is that which enables the Iker, the main entity, to flourish. So for example, the Iker of an orange is the inner fruit, while the peel is Tuffel. It protects and enables the fruit. And the same principle applies to a person. The Iker of a person is the Neshama, the self, the mind, and the soul. The body is Tuffel. It enables the soul to exist in this world, to learn, to grow, and expand. And this is the ideal relationship between the spiritual and the physical world. The spiritual is the ichor, and the physical is the tafel. The physical world is meant to enable, to reflect, and express the spiritual. Now, the ideal is for the tafel, that which is secondary and lower, to perfectly and loyally reflect the ichor, which is the inner spiritual essence. So, for the body to faithfully reflect the truth and depth of the soul. For the physical to be a loyal vessel, fully reflecting its spiritual root. The body is meant to be the vehicle which carries the soul through the world. Now, we don't believe in rejecting the physical, but we don't wish to get stuck in the physical either. The goal is a beautiful but nuanced balance, where the physical is used to reflect something higher, the spiritual. In this perfect balance, the wisdom and ideas of Torah become one with you, and you express that inner spiritual depth through the physical. And this is why almost all the mitzvahs are accomplished through physical actions. And this was the very battle between Yaakov and Esau, a battle of perception, a battle of Iker versus Tafel. 
And this brings us back to our original question. The truth is that both Yaakov and Esav wanted both the spiritual and the physical. And this was the root of their battle. Yaakov wanted to use the physical as a vehicle for the spiritual, as a tool to fully utilize and actualize spiritual potential. Now, Esav, in contrast, wanted to use the animation of the soul, but merely as a means to indulge in the physical. Essentially, Esav flipped the Iker and the Tafel corrupting their ideal relationship. He viewed the physical as ikr and the spiritual as tafel, a necessary medium for experiencing the physical world. Asaph didn't wish to use the physical to reflect anything higher than his own selfish desires. And this can be compared to a computer screen that blocked the image you wanted to see and projected itself in its place. A computer screen is the means by which we interact with the computer's inner content. A computer that projects only its own screen is useless. It rejects its true purpose. And similarly, imagine a projector that didn't project the film, it projected itself instead. That's what Asif tried to do, to focus on himself and his own ego instead of reflecting something higher. Just as he refused to reflect anything higher, he didn't wish for the physical world to reflect anything higher. And this insight into Esau's character and value sheds light onto many episodes in his life. At the beginning of Parshas Toldos, the Torah describes Yaakov and Esau's development and their respective personalities. Yaakov was a pure spiritual individual who dwelt in the tents of Torah, whereas Esau was a man of the field, a hunter. Rashi quotes the Midrash that expounds on this verse, explaining that Esau was not only a literal hunter and a literal trapper, but also a figurative one. He ensnared Yitzchak's mind by convincing him of his alleged spiritual greatness. And how did he accomplish this? He asked Yitzchak how to take mice or how to tithe from salt and straw, convincing his father that he was scrupulous in his mitzvah observance. So while Yitzchak was impressed with Esav's apparent halachic stringency, Esav was actually portraying his twisted ideology. Straw and salt have an important characteristic in common. They're both tough felt. Straw is the protective casing of wheat. Independently, it's worthless. And the same is true of salt. Anyone who cooks knows that salt itself is not meant to be tasted. It's meant only to draw out the flavor of the food. Salt is the tafel, the enabler of taste. Asaph specifically asked how to tithe straw and salt, both of which are tafel, because this was a reflection of his corrupted worldview. He essentially claimed that the tafel, salt and straw, deserves attention as the ikr, the main focus. This was his view towards the physical and spiritual as a whole. Esav sought to turn the tafel, the physical, into the ikr. He placed the physical world as the center and main focus of life, with the spiritual simply serving to enable its pursuit. And while Yaakov saw the physical body as his instrument to carry his soul through this world and enable him to live a spiritual life, Esav saw the soul as merely a way to animate his physical body and allow him to enjoy this physical world. And this is perhaps why in Sefer Avadya, Esav is compared to a nation of straw. Esav and his nation, Edom, are immersed in the world of tafel and physicality. Chazal compare Esav to a pig, because a pig gives off an external impression of being kosher due to the fact that it has split hooves, but in truth, on the inside, it's completely trafe because it doesn't chew its cud. And so too, Esav portrayed himself as a tzaddik on the outside, but on the inside, he was twisted and corrupt. And this message is so important because Esav distorted the ideal relationship between Iker and Tafel, valuing only the physical limited surface and cutting it off from any higher reality. Yaakov teaches us the true purpose of the Tafel, using it as a means towards perceiving and experiencing that which is higher, the Iker. He bequeathed the legacy and responsibility of building deeper and more empowering perceptions of the physical world. The physical is not an end in itself. It is meant to serve as a vehicle for transcendent spiritual conscious living. And this is the battle we face on a daily basis, a battle of perception. So let's be inspired to choose empowering paradigms, to peer beneath the surface, and to experience the infinite within the physical.